In this tutorial I'm going to have a quick look at some of the options that you can use for all of your graphs and charts. Now by default Minitab produces fairly nice looking graphs as it is. If you would like to make them more colourful or customise the text it's very simple to do. So if I want to modify this title because I'm going to cut and paste this chart into um, a report or a document I can just click on it, edit title down the bottom here I can change the font and the text and underline it whatever and I might just put that in as being my chart 18 let's underline it okay my chart I can modify any of the labels down here so say for the X scale I've got here if I right click on that and just check it says the right thing in this so that you are going to edit the part that you want edit X scale now here I've got, there's a whole lot of tabs here that I might want to mess around with, but I'll just go to Labels. At the moment it's automatically determining the labels from what was in the data worksheet. Instead of pools, I want to put, might want to put in my own labels. Instead of no, I might actually want to write some more text in there. So I might want to write in pool and no no pool so here we can see the labels have been changed down the bottom similarly with the with the Y scale we might want to change that for some reason uh, instead of the labels why don't we have a look at the tick marks it's determined eight ticks um, by itself perhaps that's gone every uh, every 20, every count of 20. I might want every count of 10, so I might want to double that to 16. We've got an, an automatic minimum of zero. If, for example, I was putting this chart in with a whole lot of other charts and they all went up to a maximum of 200, I might want them to look like they are all on the same scale. And so I can change the scale by resetting my maximum to 200 or whatever all my other charts look like. So I'll put 200 in there. And we can see now it's got in far more tick marks and it goes all the way up to 200 and so these are a bit lower. Inside the graph too you can also modify these um, parts of the plot. If I right click on that it says edit buttons. You need to be a little bit careful with this that you're doing what you think you're doing. If I just pick a colour here, let's say green. Now I had selected all of those bars and that might be fine, that might be what I want but really and truly maybe I just want to cover in one of the bars a different colour to emphasise it or to to make it clear what I'm talking about. So you just need to be careful what you're clicking on. I had selected all of them, now I've just selected one custom and let's change this one to orange. So now I've got one bar orange and the rest green. You'll also see up the top of the mini tab here you've got some more things you can do. There's a little crosshairs button and this will pull up out of if you right click on the grass graph as well. In cross mode, when you have the mouse around you get the crosshair and you can read the regions graph. It might be more useful say in a scatter plot than in a bar chart. We've also got some more drawing options, text, boxes, um, drawing lines, perhaps arrows. So maybe I want to write some extra text on the graph here saying um, this bar is really important for some reason. Okay, and it will now stick that on my graph. Then when you've got your graph how you want it, and I suggest you don't spend very long mucking around with them. In most cases how many tab does them will be absolutely fine for your report. When you've got it how you want it, you can uh, select the entire graph, copy the graph, and then you can paste it into Word. Now you can paste it into Word as a mini tab object and then you'll still be able to, to click on it. Depending on how fast your computer is, that can really chew up your processor. You might want to just paste, paste special and paste it in just as a picture and then it's completely flat and you can't click it on any more but it also means you can't change it by accident as well.